and pop in. So Sandy went over kind of um, content calendar and stuff like that. And I know you teach on this a lot and kind of go over things. So I would love to kind of just break down for those that missed the video lab kind of high level stuff and best practices and stuff like that. So the floor is yours. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for showing up on a Monday morning. Um, yeah, so the class was really quick. Uh, and so we had, we didn't have a whole lot of like actionable workshop, you know, time to really do anything. But what I find is like, we're told so much, like you need to be doing all this video and then take the long form and the short form and post it here and post it there and use these apps. And it can get really like super overwhelming Um, And time consuming, right? We all know that like this is a super important thing for us to do as realtors today. Um, But where do we fit it in, right? And how do we really make sure that the time and energy we're spending on it actually has a return to bring clients? And I think that's where a lot of the hesitation. Um, I've helped a lot of people through this process. And that's one of the things that I hear how can I guarantee that my time and my energy and my money, if I'm using someone to help, you know, how can I make sure that's going to have an actual return on that? And I think like, I know for me, a lot of people watch my social media, but don't necessarily interact. So, and then a lot of those people also are seeing me in other places, like my database is getting my newsletter. And like, I don't know if they, if they even can pinpoint specifically like, I saw you on social, but I think it's just another avenue into their world uh, for you to brand and expose, you know, have that exposure to them. But in that, the other thing that I've learned, and then we'll kind of get into kind of the thought process of, of how to actually conceptualize breaking this down, is that we spend a lot of time, like I see a lot of in my Facebook group and other groups that we're in with Tom Ferry and all of that, you know, Anybody have something on door knocking? Anybody have something on expires? Like there's a lot of lead sources out there, but I don't think everyone realizes like how amazing the social media lead generation part of it is, not just branding and marketing, but but we should be focusing on this heavily as part of a lead generation source. Uh, because it will result in in business if we're consistent and we're disciplined and we have it on our calendar, which, you know, kind of brings us to that content calendar piece, right? Like, I think we all know we need to do the social media, make a reel, do this, but we let work, you know, all those other things go onto the calendar and fill that space, but we don't allow time for the actual creation and the content writing and the design of it and the distribution of it and the editing of it. We don't calendar that. So I think that's where everybody kind of gets stuck. You get to the end of the day. I used to be like that. You get to the end of the day. You're like, "Hmm, I need what hmm. happened today. Yeah. I didn't post anything on social today. And then you're scrambling, trying to just get something up willy nilly with really no strategy or like thought behind it. You're just feeling like you have to post something. So the mindset switch that actually has to happen is don't just post something to post something. Have a reason for posting it. Know who your consumer of that piece of information is and make sure that's really clear. Um, I know for me, I kind of have like a little bit of a, I'm talking to you agents, you know, direction. Uh, And then I have kind of, I'm talking to you consumer, talking to you military families, like, know what you're aiming at. Uh, and I think that will be a big step. So I also think too, and Katie jump in anytime, like we're hearing a lot of mixed things now, like they used to say, you know, post three to five times a day, so many story posts. And I, I don't hear as much of that now as quality and intention and purpose and, nor- and real, like well, is going to have way more impact. For sure. And so just to kind of go back to what you just said, so are your content buckets then consumers, military relo and agents, are those kind of the things that you're cycling through as far as buckets or uh, categories? Yeah, I I have a few more, like some of them, uh, one is like our services, like us as real estate agents, what we provide tips on getting your home ready for sale or like the top five things to help 
you know, improve value of your home before you sell. Like there are some kind of a blur real estate consumer facing. Yeah. Um, like I just did a real on you know tax assessments. They just came out and everybody's going crazy. Like how does, what does that mean from a tax assessment to a property value? Like answer the questions that the consumers are asking. And I think part of that is spending time on social media. Yeah. Like calendaring, calendaring the scroll, the commenting, like actually put that in the calendar, even if it's like in the morning in your private bathroom time, like that, <laughs> and make that a point to do that every day, right? Like I think it needs to be as an important um, piece to this puzzle. Because if you're just making up content, you feel you feel like you want to talk about. It's not always what the it's viewer probably not what consumers actually want, right? Need to receive. Well, so having like avenues where you're getting email subscriptions from like lab coat agents, BAM, you know, Google alerts on real estate topics, and every day like kind of seeing what is the what's happening out there, and then being able to talk to your personal market, you know, about what they might be hearing. So what are the things that you have that you calendar out? Like, what are the categories of things? Like one of them you just mentioned was, um, mm -hmm. you know, finding topics and consuming content and different stuff like that. So what are the things that you have that you set aside time for other than just posting what you've right. already made on social? That's the easy part. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Once it's happen. already done, right? What are the yeah. things that you use, uh, yeah. the stepping stones to get to that point? Yeah. So um, I'll kind of just... Go back to last year, um, I had hired like a social media person in my office to really help with a lot of it uh, because it is time consuming. <laughs> um, and what we found was even with some assistance, scrambling for ideas. And so we said, we're not going to do that. We're going to carve out time in December. We're going to lock ourselves in a hotel room in Austin. We're going to get away from the office. Yeah. And we're literally going to bang out like the whole year worth of planning. Of, of what we're going to post about, like to the topics, like this day, we're talking about this topic. It's going to be in this format posted here, this color, this background, this font, like really, really specific. Okay. Um, because those were kind of the hangups though. I had to, those were the challenges I had that were stopping me from doing the next step. And I think we all have a challenge, whether it's, I don't know how to set up my camera. Like there's something that stops the whole rest of the process. Yeah. So what we learned in that is, you know, our calendar blocking consists of prior. So the main thing on there is our topics. We, the posting schedule, like, and then I think you kind of, then we kind of work backwards, right? If I know on Wednesday, I'm going to post, you know, a walkthrough Wednesday or whatever we'll use as a topic. Well, what am I going to walk through? What, do I have that schedule? What am I going to say so that I'm ready for that day? So we actually have our, like the whole week prior to that specific post, we have time carved out for topic research, script writing, like just anything that um, outfit changes. Like, so when I have a batch day, I know I'm going to be recording these things. My scripts are already written. They're already in the teleprompter. They've already been converted into a blog. Like all of the pieces of that distribution. So that on posting day, it's, it's posted everywhere. It's not like straggled yeah. throughout the process. Well, and so I think one of the things that that I people hear is they hear all of those things that you're doing, right? So you're already batch recording, you're creating mm -hmm. the content, you have the topics, you're blogging, you're, you're blah, 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 and you're doing all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I know that you didn't go from 1.0 to, to where you're at like 5.0 now, right? And Dan Parker talked about this with YouTube of like, hey, I just posted on YouTube and then I started doing all of these other things, right? Right. Um, would you say that the most important stuff, let me get, I'm getting to my point now. Would you say that the most important stuff would be the planning of the content and then setting aside time to actually bat shoot it. And then once you're doing that regularly, start adding in the blogging and the repurposing and the, and the, all of the other things. Yeah, absolutely. Because, because to me, like time was really valuable. So I would find myself having a topic and I'd, I'd sit down horizontal record a long form. And then I'd go back and I'd change my camera to vertical. And I'd try to do all these little clips. And I realized like I was spending so much time on like one topic that I would run out of time, like for the other ones. Um, but I think everyone's going to have their own stall, like their own yeah. spot that they stall. Not like, do you not know how to use an app that makes it really easy? Do you not have a setup 
you know, or a specific cam, you know, I say camera setup, that's dumb. Like just this and prop it up on with some books. I mean, like if you don't need yeah. to have anything fancy, um, I, but I think the calendaring of it is what's going to keep you accountable. You know, we make hair appointments and we stick to them. We make nail appointments and we stick to those. Like we have events and we put them on the calendar and nothing deviates from those things. We need to treat our content pieces like with as much importance. Yeah. I find that a lot of times um, when I have different content stuff, calendared often that just gets, you know, shoot YouTube. Okay, whatever. I'll do that next week. I'll just do it next week. And then mm -hmm, you turn mm -hmm. around and it's been months since you've shot. So you calendar right. out the actual idea planning time. You calendar out the batch shooting time. Mm -hmm. um, you calendar out or have assistance with the um, not only posting, but then repurposing and mm -hmm. posting other things on other places. Are there any other things that you have calendared out? Oh, and then you said interaction time, right? Yeah, like actually that in your calendar like, as well. Yeah, um, it is. I mean, mine's like mine's my early time of the day or or my later time, like when I'm kind of just winding down for the night. I try to go back. One, I I go back to my content and I make sure that I comment or reply to anybody who's reacted. But then I also want to spend time watching and responding and corresponding with other people, not just watching, but actually interacting. Um with that's a whole nother algorithm conversation who shows what <laughs> yeah okay. that's a whole nother thing um but that's something that you actually wind up learning that right like i think there's so many pieces that you learn like you made a really good reference like putting a video on youtube okay it's great it's sitting there but like what do you do are you keywording it like over time you'll you'll get you'll get more streamlined at everything else that during that time block you'll have time to go in to YouTube and maybe learn about keywords or meta tags or description, you know, words. But I think we think we have to be master of it all before we even take the first step. And, and that's a stumbling block for a lot of people. I mean, I do workshops on this. Like I hold actual workshops, hours, they're three hour workshops, paid workshops. And everybody comes in and we're like, okay, here we are. We're going to write this together. The last one I had, I said, we're gonna, we're gonna, today, we will actually finish like three videos. Like we are gonna video them. We are going to edit them. We are going to put them in teleprompter. Like we're doing this. And we started talking about topics and I'm like, okay, what's a topic? And it was like complete silence. I'm like, okay, just thinking of the topics like prevents yeah. us from doing all the other things. Well, and so I think that tactically for topics, one of the things that's helpful to do is think of, think of the buckets of content that you want to mm -hmm. do. And so Sandy yeah. mentioned earlier, she has agents that she speaks to, right? She has consumers just generally that she speaks to. She has people that are relocating for the military because she's near a military base. Right. Mm -hmm. And then she also designed to sell, like she has the design portion of her business as well. So there are all of these buckets of content right. that she can have and then news. Right. And so think about your yeah. content like that. Um, you know, she obviously has a couple different avatars of clients, right? Those that are relocating, mm -hmm. those that are already in town, but like, right. who is your client avatar? And then what is the stuff that they want to know when you're trying yeah. to figure out what your buckets should be if you don't already have those? Um, yeah. And so for your content calendar and like when you're, you know, you, you get super specific, I was laughing when you're like, it's going to be this color, this font, this type of post, this caption, this whatever. But yeah. do you basically just kind of recycle that every month with just different things in those buckets? Or is it every single month you sit down and create a new calendar for the month? Does that make sense? Yeah, no. So um, the buckets kind of stay the same. So the, the color scheme, what we're doing with that particular bucket is going to stay the same. Like when I say for the year, like it's the year. Okay. So yeah, but those top, like if you know, like every week you're going to do a real estate topic, like just something about your business and what you've learned in real estate and you're doing, that's 52 weeks, like get a piece of paper, right? Number it one through 52. And like, what are those things you're going to talk about? And then each one of those, just move it over. If you're going to post it Wednesday at 10 o'clock every week, then just on your calendar is like, you know, whatever the button, real estate dash top five tips for curb appeal real estate dashed and like mine are like literally color coded. So yeah. I know what bucket it's in. 
And then my team knows, you know, my assistant knows, okay, this is in the blue bucket and the blue bucket means it's a real estate content. It's this font. We're putting it here. We're doing this with it. So it's, it's kind of a, kind of like a, 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 I don't even know, like a color key, you know, like when you see they have like the little color keys about it. So that's what they have. Like they know when it's a blue, when it's color blue, like this is what happens to it. Do you have your calendar in front of you or somewhere on your desk? Yeah, I can, I can grab it. It's right here. So Sandy has, it's super color coded. And so one of the things that she also did when they sat down and created this over a year ago, this kind of plan for the year, <laughs> see, the, see all the color codes is, mm -hmm. um, she also created all of the SOPs, right? So like when she's saying when it's this type of post, it goes to YouTube, then cut up for short form, mm -hmm. then this, then it's blogged, then it's, then it's, then it's, then it's, then it's, all of that does seem very overwhelming, but it started out with the, okay, this is the post. Now let's figure out what we're going to do. And what there's an SOP that. for that, right? Mm -hmm. So when they see purple, they know that they go from A to, to Z on mm -hmm. that, on that uh, particular post. Right. I love it. Yeah, Look this at is this. like the whole, this was our last year, but yeah, this is the whole whole year and those colors are on my google calendar they're and they're titled so what are the, some of the things so um if y'all have questions drop them in the chat or feel free to you know raise your hand or, or ask them um what's the teleprompter do you use big view or what what do you use for your teleprompter no i just use the teleprompter app yeah simple uh, it's named teleprompter easy to find i like it <laughs> yeah um so i usually um and a lot of my a lot of people are like when do you write scripts i i just go in my notes and I, I know what the title is that's coming up in the next week. And like, while I'm driving in the car, like, and it's just quiet. I'm not a big radio person in the car. I, I, I really like to drive quietly. Um, if I know I have like a 20 minute drive, I'll go through my notes and I'll grab a topic and I'll just voice talk it like I'm talking to someone. And then you can go back and edit it, but you don't have to sit there and feel like you need to like write this novel. Just get your ideas out, start if you're like, oh my gosh, that'd be a great idea. That would be a great idea for a video topic. Get your notes out and just start, you know, capturing those moments. We are literally walking content from the second we wake up in this industry. Like we're literally walking content. So if one of the things I, if you're struggling with what to talk about, I just say like, find three things that happened to you today and, and write them down. Like just three things that were kind of quirky. Like I showed up at a listing and with my photographer and they like didn't do any of their homework. Like just whatever it is, like it's instead of trying to make up stuff, you're going to be most comfortable talking about the things that you actually experience. Like I have, a, I have a newer agent and I'm kind of in coaching him through the social media. And a lot of the things he says is like, well, I'm not confident to talk on a lot of the topics that are out there. Like I haven't experienced them enough to like speak on them. And then God forbid somebody asked him a question about it and he couldn't answer. Like, so that's his stumbling block is that confidence of knowledge, but you can just take what you do in a normal day, you know, and, and start there, like start with the things that come really easy to you and the things that you love to talk about when you're out with your friends, girlfriends except jake sorry jake uh when you're out with your friends and they're like oh how's business going like what is that what it what was that story you just said oh my god well i had this client like yep we, we we don't shut up about our job but all those things that we talk about are very easy to dump into content without really having to over try storytelling right like we heard chelsea talk about that at, at uh the blueprint yeah Tell your story, like talk to your people, like you're sitting across the table from them. I mean, I, I had to learn that. Like I made, I have to say the last like two and a half years, I had to make a really big adjustment to my social media because I was putting out there what I thought I wanted people to perceive me as. Yeah. And then I realized that like, I'm not even talking to my client. I had someone say like, Hey, I don't even know if you'd help me because my house does not look like the houses you talk about. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. Why am I posting all this luxury design, blah, 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 because I think it's beautiful <laughs> when that doesn't speak to my $220,000 DR Horton home yeah. client, right? Like you have to really, you can have that bucket. If you love that bucket, just make sure it's specific and that you, people understand why you're posting about it. And it's just for oohs and ahs, right? 
but then also make sure that you're using that information in a way that's going to speak to your consumer as well. So have the buckets, right? Mm -hmm. Calendar out the time to plan mm -hmm. the content. I like the idea of voice memoing it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you have a content idea, I have a note on my phone where I just keep all of my content topics. Mm -hmm. And anytime I see something, say Sandy posts a video and I'm like, I really like that video. I'll type the, the subject of her video in my notes. Mm -hmm. And then I will then, um, you know, shoot my own video on whatever topic that she may have right. shot. So I don't, I don't like to like write down her script or write down her ideas because it's in Sandy's right. voice. Right. Right. I write down the idea and then put my own spin or put my own thoughts on whatever she might have said. But, you know, we all follow probably each other. We all follow a lot of realtors. Mm -hmm. so you can get content ideas from other people. Mm -hmm. um, Rachel is asking, what's the meaning of each color block? So do you have, um, do you have colors for topics? Do you have colors for different activities? Yeah, so, how, do you, how do you kind of divide that up? Yeah, so really I just think of my buckets. Each one just represents a bucket, whether it's a, you know, um, like a sit down with Sandy, right? That was one we did last year. Like a sit down with Sandy, it was just purple. And so I just knew a sit down with Sandy was purple. So we, we put the big... Um, topics on the big pieces. And then we have the corresponding little ones are the other parts to get us to the big one. So the big square is the day we post that topic. And then we color coordinate the little ones to say, okay, this is when I'm gonna write the script. This is when I'm gonna write the, you know, do the editing. This is when I'm gonna actually video it. And you just kind of work backwards on each of the big ones. Rachel, that does sense? that answer your question? Thumbs up, does that make sense? So can you share like each, like each bucket, like what, what is like each topic that you actually already separated for the year? Like, let's say mm -hmm. this is for, I don't know, staging, all the, you know, staging buckets that you have. And then. Okay. Green okay. Yeah. So it's, so if, yeah. So if I was going to do, so that I wouldn't, I mean, maybe you have a staging bucket. If you know that much about staging, that's a lot of information to put in its own bucket. Um, but th that would go under the bucket of like us talking about like the services we provide. And we like to focus on the ones that a lot of our local agents where I am like, it's hard pressed to even get them to hire a photographer. Okay. So, so we talk about professional photography. We talk about virtual staging, how we do that with vacant homes versus physical staging. What rooms should you stage? How do you choose the furniture? Like if you, but that's all in like the real estate services bucket. And then you'd have those topics. So if that were like a weekly, I mean, any real estate topic should be weekly. You, sh you should have enough to do it once a week and then literally get a piece of paper. I don't know exactly where my papers are, but um, like get a sheet of paper and write real estate bucket at the top. And then you start numbering one through 52. And then you just decide, and you don't have to, I mean, just list them out. Um, what happens in a walkthrough, you know, pre-listing what to expect, before I come to your house, like, how do you, you know, prepare for the photographer, you know, turn the lights on and, you know, all those things. I mean, we do these things, like, when do we change the sign? Like, when do we change for sale to under contract? Like, just go about your day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can break down the contract. Like, what does an earnest deposit mean? How many days do we get for an inspection? How do we negotiate an inspection? Like, you can just kind of go through the whole transaction and come up with 52 things like really quickly. And I think if 52 is daunting, because I know yeah. that's giving me a little bit of anxiety. I'm not sure if everyone yeah. else feels the same way about that. Perhaps instead of 52, you think of the next quarter, think of the next three yeah. months, right. Yeah. And get your, get your puzzle pieces together for the next yeah. three months. Right? Yeah. So that's why like on my calendar from this year, where I, I think Rebecca has it, um, like we taped all these down because what happens is you, t you tend to find in your normal day, like I know most of the working on my business, like the, the calling and the follow-ups and like the desk work, I'll say that typically for me and my clientele, I'm here pretty much in the morning. Once noon hits, like I'm running out to hear checking on properties showings into the evening listing appointments so I have most of my things scheduled for the morning but you'll realize when you have those couple buckets you're like gosh I seem to keep sticking it on Tuesday 
Cause yeah. it seems to be when I don't have my masterminds or I don't have my coaching call. Like, so evaluate your calendar. If you're not time blocking your calendar, you're going to have to start there, <laughs> yeah. but we all know, like if we asked a poll, like you could even put it in the chat, like where's your like free space in your day? Like mine is typically my free space is typically like noon to three. That's when I can like get caught up on the things, you know, that just kind of happened between nine and noon when I wasn't paying attention to them, responding back to agents, answering clients, like kind of that get caught up. Um, but I found that most of my week, like for me, like my Wednesdays seemed to be the most open because I have a coaching call, like smack in the middle of the day. So I'm like, well, I can't go do that. Cause then I gotta be back for my coaching call or I gotta do my coaching call first before I can. So I chose Wednesdays cause it worked best for me. Um, if I go out of town, it's typically Friday or Monday that I'm not here. So it was just a really consistent time for me. And that's where I started. And I just blocked time. I mean, I did it really broad at first. Like I just blocked time. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do this topic today. Okay. I, I know the topic. Then sit down like that day, block that whole three hours and say, okay, Google, like you don't have to like come up with this stuff in your head. And now with all these AI stuff, like topics are just all over the place, you know, come up with, I always say, if you're using like a chat thing, GPT, like you write what you want or just talk about it and then have them write you a two minute script on what you typed in. Like, it's very easy to come up with the scripts and then you copy paste it into teleprompter, stick your camera out. Like, I mean, it, I think we overthink it, but start with one bucket. Like if you're struggling with all the ideas, like start with one. Yeah. Get really good at like, everybody's going to know every Wednesday at 10 AM, Rachel's posting her real estate advice, like, okay. And they're going to start to like watch for it and be ready for it and get super consistent in that one. And then say like, you know what? I've, I've really got this down. I'm, I can do this pretty quick. Now I'm getting really comfortable with captions or cap cut, you know, or something like I'm getting comfortable. I think I might actually be able to, to do like two videos in that day. I think that's super key, right? So sitting down and saying that you're going to have, how many mm -hmm. buckets do you have Sandy? I have probably like seven. <laughs> okay, so she has seven buckets of content because she's posting basically every single day of the of the week, you know, for 52 weeks a year. If you aren't putting out a lot of content, then maybe it is one or two times a mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. right? Until you yeah. get that down and then that's good after 30 days or 60 days or maybe 90 days, then add in that third day, then add in that fourth day. So yeah. I wouldn't say I'm starting on you know, June 1st, posting every single day, seven videos, seven days a week. Right. Cause you're not um, going to do it. That's like saying, I'm going to go to the gym every morning. Like you're not going to do it like one or two days. And then it, and then it falls yeah, apart. Like it just do what works for you and doesn't overwhelm you. Cause there is a learning curve, you know, and a comfort to it. Like again, in my workshops, I mean, we'll sit there and we'll spend 30 minutes. Like, okay. Did everyone upload it? Nope. I'm having trouble. Okay. What are you having trouble with? Like because we hit a stopping point and then we just say, forget it. So as far as today, you know, you've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, when you are putting out a piece of content, what's your process of it goes on YouTube, it's been cut up and it goes on Instagram mm -hmm. or TikTok or blogs mm -hmm. or this or that, and it's repurposed. And so what, like, again, this disguise is the ideal thing that you're working towards, mm -hmm. not what you're going to do tomorrow, but what does your kind of process look like, Sandy? Yeah. So in the, in the lab, I actually, in my lab packet, I actually have my distribution map. Yeah. Um, and I just did it with icons. <laughs> so that's a little Instagram symbols. So, so basically at the end of the day, I think what you have to think of before you know what to, how to distribute is what do you want from it? Like, what's the call to action? Like, what, yeah. what is it you're expecting? Just likes, like, what, what are you expecting? Because I think that has a lot of play in how far you go with posting it. Um, I like everyone to get to my website. Like, I think my website has everything. It has all my blogs. It has, like, there's a lot videos to all the neighborhood tours. Like, it's all on the website. So, everything at the end of the day, like is trying to circle them back to register for, on the website. So I can, so I can catch them and then, and then start working them. Okay. So I do long form. So my long form videos are probably 
five minutes average. When I write the script for my long form, I mentally am thinking that I'm going to have to chop this up for the shorts, for like the reels or the TikToks or the Insta shorts or the Google shorts, uh, YouTube shorts. So as I'm composing the script, I try to segment them out in kind of little one minute ideas. So if I were to pull that out completely out of context from anything else I'm talking about, does this make sense? Is there value still standalone. In, yeah. in this one little nugget? Um, that's something I learned because uh, I would just start chatting and running on and I was like, oh my God, there's like no good spot to like start and stop any type of soundbite. Um, so in my mind now, I try to find like, as I'm writing it, I section out those sound bites, so to speak. Sometimes it's just 30 seconds. Like it's just, yeah. this is a great little clip. We're just going to say this and then, okay. So we have long form. The long form gets edited with the subtitles. You don't have to be, I promise you, you don't have to be fancy with editing. Like all these Todd Collins stuff, like the pictures pop it. Like, don't, don't worry about all that right now. <laughs> just get like, the content out. <laughs> Yeah, like just just make the video. Mine were just like sitting here, just like this. I would just talk about it, and that was my video. Yeah. Um, YouTube auto subtitles if you want, so you don't even have to know how to do anything else. So mine goes on YouTube. Uh, the YouTube link gets um, okay. So that goes on YouTube. The script actually gets uploaded as the description. So I just copy paste the script. Nobody reads that whole description. So it's there more for um, SEO, right? For word, word technology. The same script, I rewrite a little more bloggish, right? Because sometimes it's very scripty. So you just can kind of soften it a little bit more like a story. That same thing, and I try not to change too much because that now will also go into my blog. So if you think about like, I said it, I typed it, it's in multiple different places, the exact same um, strings of words. Yeah. Like I remember back, like when Jason Pantano was very big on profiles, right? Like if you're Sandy Payne, capital S, capital P, like on Instagram, be Sandy Payne on all the other ones too. Because if you start to vary those, I'll say the series of zeros and ones, right? Like you're changing those. And so the internet is not recognizing you as the same two people or the same person. It's separating you. And it's from a brand recognition, right? Like you don't want to have your name, like your, your usernames yeah. be slightly different on every platform. You want to try to have them be the same, if as not very, very, possible. very similar. Yeah. Right. So that same concept is with your descriptions and your captions. Like Keep them similar because the internet's picking up on like, wow, this string of words yeah. has been said multiple times on different platforms. We should maybe think about showing this to people. It seems important because it's been talked about several different ways. I know that's getting a little bit deep, but I think the reason I say that is don't think you have to rewrite for every platform, like just use what you already wrote. And I think that's like, one of the beautiful things is just like write it and then use what you wrote. Yeah. So, so yeah, long form YouTube, the blog comes from the YouTube, the link gets shared on my Facebook, the YouTube link gets shared on my Facebook, the blog gets shared in my, on my website. So that's kind of like where that's, so we want people to come to the blog and then get right through. And then on the, on the uh, website at the end of the blog, you can say to watch our YouTube link, you can put the YouTube link. So it's some way they're like circling either the blog or the YouTube video. Then those little clips get chopped up into short forms, three to four, three to five, just however many. Um, and then they go, they are considered short form. Those are the ones that are gonna go through the wash on like uh, cap cut or captions. If you want to add backdrops or words or the little emoji things, and those are going to be vertical. So the YouTube is vertical, uh, horizontal. Now, what one of the little tips that I have when you video your um, horizontal videos, think of the center third like this right here. Yeah. This is your short. So if you're too close, in your horizontal, if you try to clip this, resize it to a vertical, 
you're gonna be like all face. So I try to like back up to the point where my third of my horizontal will now also be a very nice um, short presentation. Awesome. So you so, don't have to like try to record it both ways, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Horizontal. Just cut it up. Yeah. Yeah. And then when you go into something like captions or cap cut and just resize, it's just gonna snap Take you into the first this center or third. There you are. Yeah. So yeah. long form on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Think about the sound bites as you're making your script. And I think that when you um outline out your things of point one, point two, point three, point mm-hmm. four, point five, or how many ever points you have, whether it is a list, the five reasons why you want to move to Fort Hood, or it's just five things about something, right? You want to think A, B, C, D, E, or whatever mm-hmm. it may be so that you have those sound bites, right? You could ramble for five minutes, but think about the five ramblings mm-hmm. you want, right? Yeah. Um, and then so- I try to not say like, I try to not say here are like the top five. Yeah. I just like, here are the top, right? Like, so not like number one, do whatever. Cause now if you pull that out, you're like number three, people are like, well, what was number two? Yeah. Like, so try not to number them like as you go. I mean, it's a habit to kind of do that, but it's just something I learned to make it easier down the line is like, to cut don't number yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, and so they go through the wash, they're edited out and they do the uh, Instagram uh, reels, Facebook reel, YouTube short, Google short is basically where all of my shorts go. Awesome. And then she yeah. takes her script right? Puts it in the description on YouTube and mm-hmm. then she reworks it a little bit for it to then go on a blog on her website. If you're not doing this, Sandy, I would also recommend embedding the YouTube on the blog as well mm-hmm. on your website, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then is repurposing all of that short form across all platforms. Right. Yeah. And then the Instagram one specifically, and you can do it with Facebook too, um, where you can add a link So on the Instagram post, you share that to your story and then add the link to the full YouTube. So now you're taking them from the shorts, pushing them if they're interested over to the YouTube channel, which is now like shooting them back over towards your website and kind of getting them into trying to get them into that database so you can drip on them with your newsletter and so on and so forth. And for those of you that didn't watch Erica's replay, she drives everyone to her website as well, because with the pixel installed, then she's able to follow them around the internet, right? So if you're mm-hmm. going to run mm-hmm. ads or you're planning on running ads, you do want that one place that you're cur- continuing to send them to, right? Mm-hmm. Not YouTube today, Facebook tomorrow, website right. the next day, then this, then this, then this, right? So if, if Sandy's blog has links to her YouTube and has everything embedded and, and is where she wants them to go, that should always be her focus, right? Mm-hmm. That should always be y'all's focus. Um, cool. Does anyone have any questions on, um, content or anything like that? I think, I mean, I think it's, it's easy, Sandy to say, you just have to time block and put it in your calendar. You have to time Mm -hmm. block and put it in your calendar. We hear it all the time, but it Mm -hmm. still doesn't seem to happen. Right. Right. What, what were some of the things that you did to actually make it happen? I had someone else help me. So get some accountability. Um, like my assistant, like I have, like, she's on, like, I have to do it. <laughs> she's like, where's your thing? Um, we actually set up um, like a Trello board. I mean, you don't have to, I mean, you can literally use the description in your calendar, like on that block, you can put your script right in there. Like, like make it super easy. Um, but she has a responsibility to post. And if I'm not doing it, then she doesn't have anything to post. So kind of having someone who's on top of you um, holding you accountable for that, you know, is really important too. You know, ultimately, you know, in the end, like it's bizarre how many people like watch, but don't say anything, but man, when that time comes, like I got an email just literally last Thursday. Hey, my name's, my name's Rachel. Um, we're coming to Fort hood. I found you on Instagram. We want to buy a house next year, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like I would, I would never know this person followed me. Right. Yeah. But people are out there watching, even if they're not super interactive. Um, I have lots of stories on, on people on having listing opportunities because my wife's obsessed with you on Instagram, you know, and walk into the house and she's like staring, like, Oh my gosh, you're like a real person. I'm like, yeah, I'm a real person. <laughs> this little old lady at church. is like, I watch all your videos, <laughs> you know, so they're out there. And I think, um, I think not overthinking being who you are, 
Don't worry about the filters and the fancy stuff. That, that can come. Sometimes my best, my best post is just like me being real. Yeah. Like just me talking to whoever I'm talking to. Yeah. Well, and so my, my takeaway from that, and I, and I would agree with you on that. Um, you know, I, I do high production quality videos with my videographer, mm -hmm. but then when things happen and I'm like, I need to, to post about this ASAP, I just take my phone and I shoot it. Right. I've yep. had videos where I'm in my car after getting rained on, or I'm in the car mm -hmm. after the gym mm -hmm. or things like that, that perform yeah. a lot better than the ones that I've spent thousands of dollars on. Right. So I think yeah. that when you're sitting there being like, what camera do I need to get? Or what microphone do I need? Or what, what, what? I, you know, your phone camera, as Sandy said, is so high quality, just get started, just start doing something. Yeah. And even like there's, I have the new phone. There's, I, I just learned there was a microphone setting. You can actually like voice enhance, like to get rid of background right while you're recording. Like it's just, it's so, it's so easy. Um, yeah. I think like the biggest thing is just picking something you're really comfortable talking about and start there. And you're going to realize that like, there's so many things that you're good at and comfortable talking about, you know, for sure. And so Sandy does do regular classes on this and other, th other things mm -hmm. in regards to real estate. So if y'all aren't connected with her on Instagram, get with her on Instagram, follow her. Cause she announces things on there, um, mm -hmm. as well as in her Facebook group, but she can send you the link to that. If you connect with her on Instagram and send her a message, and, um, I mean, she's just a wealth of knowledge, not only on content creation and, and kind of the, the, the SOPs behind it, but also, you know, expireds and, and listings and client events and all kinds of other stuff. So, yeah. Um, and I want to say too, like, if I, if you don't mind, like I was like, right where you all were just a couple years ago. Like I would see people, I'm like, how do they have 50,000 followers? Like I went, I have like a thousand, like this is stupid. And I got really overwhelmed and frustrated with like, how do I get more followers? But what I realized is, you know, if you're looking at your insights, you can have 5,000 followers and reach 32,000 people. But if 5,000, if, if 4,900 are your followers, like your follows, your followers are really engaged with you. So it's not about just having, like, I get some followers and they're in like Zimbabwe. I'm like, really, really, you really want to like, or creepy men, no offense if there's men on here, but you know what I mean? Like they'll follow you for a couple minutes, like all your, all your, so whatever. Like, I don't want those people. I would rather like, I'm almost to 5,000 followers, but I can pretty much see that almost all of them are super engaged with me. Yeah. And I think that's really important, you know, to remember who you're talking to. If you're talking to that one and that one person needs to hear what you said at that moment, or that was the moment that they were like, I think this is the person I want to work with. Like that's, that's what matters. Like not how many followers. Yeah. No, people get caught up in how many, how many views and how many likes and how many mm -hmm. followers and mm -hmm. things like that, but definitely looking at insights of how many people are in your local market. Mm -hmm. And then if people are, are reaching out to you, um, again, they're probably not commenting on the, the post saying, Sandy, I love this post. Let's go list my house, but they are going to be calling down the line after right. watching those videos and not commenting. So, yeah. um, you know, it's definitely, it's definitely a journey for sure. Um, does anyone have any other questions for Sandy Payne? You're all pros. I'm going to see all your videos. No. <laughs> but I want you to just like, I think with saying that is like, just start where you are. Like you're going to attract, um, I see Michelle, like just be you, like you have got your tribe of people out there. Like they might be watching other real estate agents who are younger or, you know, I'm not picking on you, but I'm saying like in general, like don't worry about reaching everyone like just your people will be your people. Like, and, and I think that's more important than anything, right? Like an experience and case studies, like just all those things that you hear, like just be real. Um, and if dancing to TikToks is your thing, like great, like they're all fun. Um, but that doesn't really like teach anybody anything. Like it's not really valuable, but it just shows you're fun. But if you're not fine, like don't do it. Right. Like just do, do That's, you. Um, and when you walk in someone's door, like 
you, you're exactly who they expect. And they're not like, oh, well, you're nothing like you are on, you know, I mean, I think it's just that having that genuine peace and not over worrying. Yeah. Um, awesome. Will you hold up your board again? Oh, sure. Sure. So Selena, she is color coding it based on topic uh, yes, or, or topic. bucket. Mm-hmm. So it's a little blurry, but um, yeah. Yeah. I have cool. some like free, like just literally, like if you're not with me on Insta, like just DM me and be like, Hey, can you send me some pictures? Like, yeah, yeah I'll yeah, share yeah. this. I can, yeah, I can share whatever. If you need like little tutorials on captions, like I've made little tutorials that I share in my classes, you know, just awesome. let me know, like, what's your hiccup and let she me help probably has an SOP for it. Get over it. Yeah. Let me yeah. help you get over it. So you can feel better about this. Awesome, Sandy. Thank you so much for your time. Um, For y'all that want to rewatch this recording, it will be on the Video Blueprint website. So um, it'll be up later this week. But thank you, Sandy, for your time. You're the best. Of course. My pleasure. All right. See y'all. Bye.